Good morning everyone. Welcome to Know Your Numbers and Make More Money webinar. My name is Maria Winter and I am from the education team and I will be taking you through this webinar today. A little bit of housekeeping first. Um, so the duration of this webinar will be approximately 30 minutes. My microphone is on. Everyone else's has been automatically muted. Your speakers must be turned on to hear this webinar. Any questions will be taken during or at the end of the webinar using your chat box. Webinar overview. So today you'll learn where to start with your reporting, how to measure the value of future appointments and prepare your staff, how to add value for your clients while increasing your revenue, so we'll be going into memberships, how you can turn first visit clients into second visit clients, and a few more money making tips as well. So let's get started. We'll get started with the reports. So numbers can be intimidating. So if you don't know where to look, know which reports are valuable to your business. And we're gonna start focusing on these reports here. Starting off with the trading summary. The trading summary is a trade over a date range. This report includes any payments received, sales, a breakdown of your products and service sales. It will also break it down with your employees by utilizing the miscellaneous um, tab as well when you're searching for the report. This report is a great tool for a quick overview on your daily, weekly, and monthly results. The next report I'll be going through is client retention. So a bit of an overview on client retention. This report will display information for a specific date period of time for each employee and also the overall business results as well. This will indicate how many clients have returned within a 90 day period. So are your clients actually returning? This report will give you that snippet of the client returning. It will also indicate if the client is returning to the same employee or has the client been retained by a different employee or maybe the client has been lost so they have not returned. So it's a great indication to see who are the strong employees and who's retaining all of those clients the ones that have been lost, you'll actually be able to view that report, export it, email it to yourself, or even print it off. And you can even go through and call those clients to see why they haven't returned, or maybe offer them a bit of a special to try and entice them to return. The next report is rebooking breakdown. So the rebooking breakdown is a report listing employee appointments, rebooking statistics for a specific date range. The overall rebooking percentage is per month and it's displayed in a graph. The employee breakdown section will show the number of visits, the rebookings, and also the rebooking percentage for each employee. So are your employees rebooking? Do you have the reminder setting ticked on so it does prompt at point of sale? This is a great reminder to have for the employees because what happens is it, the reminder will prompt up at the point of sale before you end the sale. It will just give them that reminder to actually ask. If you do not have this rebooking reminder at the point of sale, there is a tick box in your configuration settings. The next report is top selling products. So this is a great way to see which are your top selling products. If you've had any maybe promotions set up, you can see how well that promotion has gone. 
and it will be in order of descending amount for a specific date range. This report will only show retail items, so not professional. The next report is top selling services. So this is a report that will display your services over the date range you select. This is a great way to see which are your top selling services, but also the ones that aren't doing so well. So if you do have some services that you would like to promote more, you could maybe pop them in a series or you could pop them into um, a membership, maybe um, have a discount on those services to try and boost those um, numbers up. The next one is the referral breakdown report. So the referral activity gives information on referrals for a specific date range. The report will display a total for each referral method and for clients referred. The report will give you a count on referrals and also the total value of clients referred by that referral method. This is a great way to see return on investment, especially if you have set up any local area marketing, um, any campaigns maybe on Instagram or Facebook, or even if you're in magazines or you've popped something in the local newspaper. So my question is to you, have you updated your referral method category? Keeping this updated regularly, especially when you do take on new marketing tools, um, will keep your reports up to date so you can track your return on investment. So you can also do this in your uh, setup and configuration settings. This one is under the general tab and it's under clients. So after I go through all of the reports towards the end of this webinar, I will give you a few um, tips and tricks and I'll show you where a few of these things are just in case you don't know. Beautiful. So you can also track um, when your clients do refer friends and family as well. So it's really important that your employees know how to pop that into the system, especially if you do have uh, GCAST marketing set up too. So what happens is if I was a regular client to your salon and let's say I referred my mum, three days after I my mum visits your store, I would receive a thank you campaign email with a special offer from your salon because I referred my mum. So long as your staff pop that in, the referral um, method system. So you can do that by adding it in when you put them in as maybe a new client um, under the referral tab. Or if they're an existing client, um, then you would put that into their go into their card and then information tab. So I'll go through and show you that once we've gone through the rest of these reports. So that's everything on the referral activity report. So there's so many things that you can utilize um, just by looking at the report and just making sure your staff are all over how to really put that data into your system. The next report is the service breakdown by category. So this report will give you a number and value of services broken into categories for your date range you have selected. So the most important thing is when you set up a new service, it needs to be categorized into what we call a reporting category. So when you set up a service, you may notice little tick boxes um, towards the bottom of the screen. Now what you can do is you can categorize a top 10 reporting categories. So that way you can categorize maybe your skin treatments or whether it's hair treatments or extensions into particular categories so you can track to see how much income is coming from that particular service. So making sure that you do categorize them correctly will really um, help you utilize this report. The next report is product sales summary. So this is a great way to see an overall breakdown on product sales for a specific date range, 
products will be displayed um, first by the company, um, then the line, then the actual individual product. It will give a total of each company and it will also give a total um, business breakdown as well. Beautiful. So now we're going to move through to the value of future bookings. So there is a report for this one. It is called Value of Future Appointments. So this report will enable you to forecast the coming weeks and give you an insight of what is to come so you can manage your daily, weekly and monthly targets. This will give you a pipeline. It gives you an idea of if you are understaffing or overstaffing. Um, it's a great way to set individual employee targets as well. So if you were to print one off for you know, just the one day, you could see what the girls have got or guys have got booked in for that one day and then set a target from there. You might even do that for the week or the month ahead as well. So there's so many things you can do with just that one report. Awesome, the next report is employee performance. So this report will enable you to track employee productivity and utilization. This will give you an insight for development of your team to provide support where is needed and to keep them feeling motivated as well. So this will give um, you an understanding based on how many hours they've worked, based on what they've actually brought into your business. Moving on to enable labour forecasting. So this is another great report. Um, so to view this report, you will need to switch on your labour forecasting. Um, so that's just in your configuration setting. Um, there is a tick box that needs to be ticked on. So being able to forecast your resources will really help save you money. This will also help with your staff rosters and really organise um, your schedule. So labour forecasting allows you to sample da data from a previous time frame to help calculate your future requirements for your roster. This feature will display a colour bar graph of your predicted appointment demand as well as walk-in demand uh, for each day as well. These graphs can be used as a visual guide to help you see when the peaks and the lulls um, do occur throughout the day, in turn allowing you to plan your rosters more effectively to really help avoid being overstaffed or understaffed on any given day. So knowing and predicting your numbers will equal a lot of savings. So again, um, if you haven't utilised this feature before, um, we do have some amazing videos on our website um, under the support tab under the Learning Centre um, and you can set this up by simply going into configuration settings and under the general tab tick on enable labour forecasting. Awesome, now we're going to move on to how to add value and boost some revenue. So we've got gift cards. So gift cards is a big one, not only just for, you know, the busy time of year, Christmas. It is a great way to generate some quick revenue for your clients um, and regular clients as well. What you could do as well when you do have gift cards for not Christmas time or those busy times of year is maybe give a little bit more incentive for your regular clients to purchase them. So if you have... Uh, if a client wants to say buy a $100 gift card, maybe offer a little extra value for that extra little price for them. So they pay 100 but they get the value of 110 to give to their friend or family. If you do have your GCast marketing set up as well and they give a gift card to a friend or family that hasn't been into your salon before, they will also get uh, a referral email if you have that set up to say thank you for referring that friend or family member and then they get another incentive with a voucher or discount that you have popped in your GCAST marketing. So gift card will give you that boost of revenue for that day. Just remember the gift card will um, be added to your total takings for that day 
And then when it comes to redeeming it, it will sit under, I guess, as a liability until that client comes back and redeems it. So you can monitor your sales versus redemption on your trading summary. So that's a really great way um, of just tracking how many gift cards you've sold versus how many you have redeemed as well. Membership. So setting up your clients on a membership can offer you a steady, reliable flow of income while giving them something of value. So a membership is a great way to offer something a little extra so the client feels like they're getting something really worthwhile, especially when they're paying you uh, maybe a weekly or monthly fee. Perhaps you could offer 10% off retail, um, maybe add on a little extra, you know, hair treatment or skin treatment within the whole uh, discount. There's a few starting ideas there. There is so much opportunity to give your clients something of value that won't cost you the world. Um, when they're on a membership too, this obviously locks that client in for maybe 12 months, six months, depending on what you set up. Um, that will also mean that your clients are more likely to um, actually turn up to their appointment. So that will help reduce no-shows. Um, that will also help increase your rebooking if you are tracking your rebooking with KPIs. Um, and regular members, you can also help calculate predicted business. So again, you can forecast what, you've, what income you've got coming in. Because with a membership, they can pay weekly or monthly, so you're guaranteed that income. Okay, so now we're going to move through to first visit clients and how to turn them into second visit clients. So on a first visit client, make sure you collect as much data as possible. So with collecting data, you may be already using our new um, features, which is our client information cards for your tablets or your iPads. So by simply handing your client the iPad, if you do have it set up on your iPad with your shortcuts console, your client will simply enter in the information onto that device and that will save directly to your shortcut system. So that will save any um, spelling errors or any little mishaps with not collecting the correct email address and details. This will open up so many doors for marketing and reporting. Um, after their first visit, be sure to send them an email to ask them to leave a ratings and review. So if you do have shortcuts console login, make sure you do have your ratings and reviews set up. So what happens is, as soon as a client has been in, if you have your ratings and reviews activated, your client will automatically receive a nice email from you with a link, and it simply asks them six questions to rate their experience. So questions will be like, um, how was the environment of the salon? How was the professional advice I received? What was the overall experience like? So there are six questions. They give you the rating. And as soon as that actually comes through, you do get a notification to your email address as well that you have set up. Um, and you can display these on your My Local Salon page. And you can also share them on your own website as well. So you can have you know, between maybe three or five um, testimonials, you can call them rotating on your website to show that um, clients are happy. So when a client is researching your business and they have a look on your website, they can see clients absolutely love their service there. You can also send them a thank you um, for visiting campaign. So this is done via Gcast and we call this a set and forget new client email. It can simply be a thank you for visiting our salon. Here is all of our social media links. It's a great way to introduce those new clients to what you guys are all about. So, you know, what specials you might have on your Facebook page, Instagram, any competitions. If you really want to entice them to return for a second visit, you could simply add an offer into the email. Um, the offer could be a percentage off. 
So something like 20 to 25% off is cool, or you could do a $10 voucher. Now they can use that just off service. Um, I have seen some really good ideas with, um, you know, $10 off service, or you could put it off service or product, or a complimentary blow dry or complimentary eyelash tint at your next service. So you can really utilize the vouchers and customize it to suit your business. Client frequency is also a really another important KPI to monitor, especially when you're really trying to see if those first time visit clients are actually returning. Um, so client frequency is all about um, giving you an idea of how often your clients are coming in. So if you are a beauty salon versus hair salon, it can be a little bit different. So obviously with, within skin and beauty treatments, you want your clients coming back, you know, maybe for skin treatments every two to four weeks or even waxing, you know, every four weeks. Whereas here, you want them coming back every maybe six to eight weeks at least. Um, so you can monitor the client frequency by signing into your shortcuts console and going into your um, business performance calculator, that tab is called scorecard. The scorecard reporting is another great way of really utilizing your features and seeing um, your net sales, your services, but you can see your client frequency and you can see how often they're coming. So really monitor that on a monthly basis and, and keep trying to improve that. Awesome, okay, so we're gonna move through to a few quick money-making tips. Um, so upselling is probably something you might already do. If not, it's a little reminder today. Um, so a few upselling ideas, you could have uh, an add-on category. If you don't already have an add-on category um, in your service list, you can add it in. So just by creating a new category and then have a few mini treatments in there. Now, if you have online booking, if you tick these on for available for online booking under your service list by ticking the web box, clients can then see this add-on category. Now, a few examples that you could have would be maybe if you're a beauty salon or a clinic, you could have um, an eye mask as an add-on or an extra 15 minute massage. If you're a hair salon, you might do um, a mini hair treatment um, or you could even do you know, tinting and waxing, things like that. By having these available for online booking, it, it does open up the door so clients do, do see these add-ons. Another great way to boost up and um, make a little bit more money on the day would be to mention it on the phone as well. So making sure your receptionist or your staff are all over how to really complement the service the client wants to book in. So if I'm booking in for a blow dry and someone offers me to have a beautiful hydrating treatment and I've got time, no doubt I would say yes. So make sure um, that your staff feel comfortable in um, really complimenting what the client is wanting by simply doing it over the phone as well. Also, educating your staff on features and benefits of your service and products. Um, by dividing it into features and then the benefit, the benefit will then benefit your clients. So teaching them the difference between feature versus benefit will really help. And that can be for your products and services as well. Shelf talkers will be a great help for features and benefits. So shelf talkers um, in your display cabinets with your products will really help. Um, especially if you have apprentices or any juniors um, and if they can't quite remember exactly what's in that product, it's just a great quick squeeze over those key ingredients um, to help trigger their mind. You can also, um, you know, really promote your add-ons or extras in your GCAST marketing. So don't forget to add that on and you can do different add-ons or different products in each email campaign, um, just so you're getting all of these extras out and about. So if a client does call up and they might have seen that email, then they can say, oh yeah, I do remember seeing that in that last email, so it's not completely new to them. 
focusing maybe on a service or product as a team, this could create a really good um, team competition. Um, you might have a product of the month that everyone's focusing on or a service of the month and that could really bring in or tie in with your current promotions as well. Um, another tip could be um, adding in some questions into your client consultation cards. So with your client consultation cards, whether you've got it on paper or if you are using our client information cards on your tablet or iPad, you can customise these um, if you do have the customise consult feature. So you could ask a question um, that will open that conversation up for your employees. So the question could be, what is one thing you would like to improve on your you know, hair or skin? And then that gives the client an opportunity to write something down because not everyone feels comfortable talking about themselves or um, it's just a great way for your, for your staff to have a, a bit of a starting point. Another great upselling idea would be a treatment plan. So a treatment plan can include a full consultation, going into a bit, a bit of a treatment plan on services and then obviously um, educating them on products that would benefit them. So you can even go into series. So if you are a hair salon, you might already have series. Series is a great way to really boost your sales on the day. Um, so an example for series would be maybe purchase 10 blow dries and get one for free. Now a really good way maybe of recommending that is if, if someone comes in for say a blow dry and they've been in, never been into your salon, you might say if, if you'd like to come back um, weekly, what we can do is set you up on a treatment plan, your first one will be free today. So they can redeem the first one on the day and then they have nine remaining. So they get a, a discount and they're locked in for 10 treatments. That's really good for client retention and for, for rebooking and it gives your, your employees more opportunity to open up the door for more, different services for the client and also educate them on your skincare or hair products. Um, so also by having employee targets in mind as well. So make sure if you do have series or memberships, monitoring how many you sell versus how many you redeem. Again, you can view that on your trading summary report. So on your trading summary report, um, you will notice that you'll have the sales and then you'll have the redemptions on the trading summary. So making sure you do monitor that maybe weekly or monthly, just to track to see how many you're selling versus redeeming. Um, because that can um, really affect your profit and loss. Um, you can also have a regular in-house promotion as well. When you do have promotions and all the team is on board, this will really help bump up your average spend. So you can view and track your average spend on your trading summary. So your average ticket is your total net sales, so both service and product divided by how many clients have actually been in. So you could set a KPI around your average ticket. You can also um, look at reducing costs. So minimizing um, waste of product by performing stock takes regularly. Um, you can also make sure you are tracking your professional stock usage. So if you do have all of your stock in your system, retail and professional, Performing stock takes on all of it is really important, but you've got to also remember when you have professional stock in your salon, you need to also remove that from the levels as soon as that bottle is empty. Now you can process your professional stock through the shortcut system by putting it under the business uh, tab in point of sale. When you do that, what happens is that professional stock will then be displayed in your professional stock usage report. So that report will give you um, a bit of an overview of how much you're actually going through, which will really help your profit and loss. And you can see if your staff are utilizing the products correctly and not underusing or overusing as well.
So what I would suggest is you can cross-check all your invoices against what you've received. Really analyse your stock just to make sure what actual products are successful and maybe not so successful. So you can eliminate any unnecessary expenses. Beautiful. So before we um, have a bit of a summary, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the shortcuts program now and I'm just going to show you where a few of those things I mentioned are. So feel free to write down any notes um, and feel free to ask me any questions. So I'm just going to go into the shortcuts program. Okay, so we're now in the shortcuts program. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the trading summary and how amazing and how much information you can get from this one report. So where you go to find all the reports is under tools to the right hand side. I'm sure you guys use this on a daily basis but if not um, this will be a great reminder on um, what you're viewing. Then we go on to reports. Now all your reports are listed in categories. So the trading summary you'll find will be in the end of day tab and it's in the trading summary here. Now each report does have a description as well. So if you ever get stuck with any reports, feel free to just refresh yourself on the description. Then I'm going to go down to view and I'm going to select my date range. So when I'm selecting my date range, I want to choose the first day first and then the second day. So that means I'm ranging from and to. You can also utilize the miscellaneous tab to the left here if you're wanting to see particular employee breakdown, especially if you have a promotion on product or service. And if you do have incentives for your staff and targets, this is a really great way of uh, tracking to see how well that particular promotion is or how well they are selling that product. Then we're going to go down to view. Um, and this is, uh, this is an, a trading summary overview. So you've got your takings to the top left. You've got the individual sales, so sales, services, products. Now up the top here you've got the gift card sales versus redemption. So this is um, one thing um, that you can really monitor and just see how many you've sold versus redeemed. And you can see here your liabilities will sit here. So the liabilities would be your gift cards and series sales and if they have prepaid for anything. The reason why it sits here is because maybe they haven't redeemed their service if it was a series or they haven't redeemed their gift card. If you're monitoring your average ticket, so your client's average ticket, you can see ticket total. So this particular um, demo salon here has had 10 tickets and then the total value there. You can also see your new client percent. And you can also break it into male versus female as well. So making sure if you predominantly see females, you can have that defaulted to female and just make sure the staff um, do change it to female or male if, if they need to so your stats are correct. You can also see the employee names and products versus services down the bottom here. You've got totals, the average ticket. If you have your roster set up too, that will display the time. And this will display the service per hour. So I know a lot of salons do have targets for the staff to reach per hour. So that is a very good one to see as well. Now, if I click over to the next one, this will actually show me employee product breakdown. So if you do have weekly targets for your team, this is a really great way of showing them how much retail they've got to. Simply print this one out. Now when you do go to print, if you do want to um, share this with the team to kind of motivate them more, if you're wanting to pr print the whole report, press print down the bottom. But if you are wanting to print just the one page, you can simply press print up here. 
You can also export this report as well. So you can email it to, you know, maybe the owner if you're a manager or if you want to um, send it to your business partner. You can save it as a PDF and then attach it to your email. Now the next one I'm going to show you is the employee service sales. So if you have a particular, um, say, service or promotion going at the moment, that is a really great way of seeing how well it's actually going. And you can see the totals are up here. So that's an overview on the trading summary. I'll take you back through to a few um, different reports. The next one um, I'll show you is the client retention. So under employee, we've got client retention. Now you can see here that it's based on 90 days. So there is a bit of a, a trick with this one. So if I was trying to range for February, I actually want to count back three months. So what I would need to do because I want to see if those clients from 90 days ago are actually returning. So I need to skip back to 2017 because I'm trying to count, say, March. So that means I'm skipping February, January and December and I need to count the whole month of November. So that's 90 days from, say, March. Then I'm going to press View. Because this is a demo, there will be no um, stats, but you would have all of your employee names here, the total clients the business has seen, how many have actually seen the same employee versus how many clients are seeing a different employee. So that means the client is still returning, but not to that particular staff member. You'll be able to see how many is retained and how many is lost. Now what you can do is double click on the percentage of lost and then that will then open up into report and it will list the actual client's name so you can then call them or contact them. Now with client retention you can also view new clients so that there is existing but if I click on miscellaneous I can then go on new clients and then select that on yes. So then you can track other new clients coming back as well. Um, the next thing I will show you is where, the, where to find the referral methods. So if we go into set up to the right hand side, then into configuration, to the left hand side over to general, under the client tab is where you can customize your referrals. So up the top this is broken into four tabs. So under referrals, um, these are the generic ones. If you would like to add more, so if you have created a new campaign or you are doing a cross promotion with another business and you need to simply add that one in, um, you just press new and type it in here and then it will be saved here. So then when your clients go to, you know, add a new client in, your referral methods will display here. If you are spending, um, you know, a lot of money on the marketing, you want to make sure you do pop it in here so you can track because you can actually view a report on that particular referral method. Beautiful. So there, I just wanted to show you a few um, tips and tricks in there. Um, so thank you so much for listening to the webinar today. Um, so a bit of an overview on what we covered. So today you have learned where to start with your reporting, how to measure the value of future appointments and to prepare your staff, how to add value for your clients while increasing your revenue, so we went through memberships, and how you can turn first visit clients into second visit clients, and just a few extra money making tips. Um, so now is the question time, so if you have any questions, feel please feel free to pop them in the question box and I'm more than happy to answer them. Beautiful, okay, so I've had a question. 
Um, so how do we get started on memberships? So memberships um, is an extra feature. So what we need to do is do a bit of a consultation to get an idea of what type of membership you are wanting to set up because there are so many different options you can have. So with memberships, um, we can customize it depending on what you're wanting. So an example, say for hair, would be you could have no membership um, joining fee as an example but they pay either weekly or monthly so you might have a glam package now that glam package is a blow dry maybe two blow dries a week um, and then they might pay 50 or 60 dollars a week depending on your cost um, and you can set that up to be an automatic payment um, through something like easy easy pay or easy debit and that's just automatic for you and then you just manage that by checking your statements. And we do training, so then we teach you how to put someone on membership, activate it, how to really um, monitor all the payments. If you do have easy debit, um, you will then import the invoice into your shortcut system onto the console. And what happens is that information synchronizes with your shortcuts point of sale and it automatically will then populate the, the money into that client's account for you, which is really cool. Um, so that's a really great question. Thank you so much. If you do have any other questions, please feel free um, to email through. We do have an education email address. So it's education at shortcuts.com.au. We've also got our 1300 number. Now, if you need any technical support, this is our number here. And if you do have any questions on um, how much memberships are or if you want to add series, please feel free to contact our customer care team on this number as well. But thank you again for um, listening in. I hope you got something out of the webinar today. For any more information on what I covered, please feel free to jump on our website um, we do have a search bar, so if you're unsure on a report or, or you do have any questions, you can also email me directly on the education email or have a look on the Learning Centre as well. Thank you so much and have a good day.